If you want to control the monetary system, the financial system, you need to eliminate cash transactions. You want to be able to oversee all purchases and transactions within the system so that you have the ability to determine where the money is moving and you can stop it in its tracks should you desire. That's happening now and it's called a cashless society. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at this. I want to cover so many different issues today. Let's begin with this. In Sweden, the leading cashless society, you can see that there is just 2% of the total value of transactions consisting of cash. 2%. And that is expected to decline to less than half a percent by 2020. There's actually such a big problem that the central bank had to warn about what's happening. Even they are getting freaked out. It's becoming the norm in Sweden. Doesn't mean that there's no cash available, it just means that it is becoming extinct. All right, I'm gonna show you different pieces of information here. This right here is so important because it is happening all over the world. The days of cash for less discounts are officially coming to an end. The government has introduced an economy-wide cash payment limit of $10,000 to keep dishonest tradies and businesses from Rorting the system by taking cash in hand. We're looking at Australia in this case here, and they are just one of many countries which have been doing the same thing, limiting how much cash people can take out of the bank, limiting what they can put into the bank, limiting what they could transfer overseas. They are basically trying to make it more and more difficult to do business in cash. That's a fact. It's going on all over the world. Different countries have been covering it for years now. And you can see what's happening in slow motion. Okay, They use different excuses for it. And I'm sure on one level, yes, it's true that they can, you know, try and mitigate some of that. But that's not the real reason why it's happening. Number of worldwide non-cash transactions in the billions. No matter where you look around the world, it seems that these numbers are increasing. More and more people are becoming comfortable using credit cards and debit cards. And, you know, in certain places of the world, they're using their cell phones to pay. And that's, you know, in areas where using traditional currency just isn't valid anymore so they're going around that and so we see the same thing happening with all the different payment systems that are popping up alipay and apple pay android has their own and they're all coming up with new methods of making purchases and people find it to be very easy very convenient so they're going that route now when you look at this you have to start to analyze, well, is it really worth the convenience? Because you know that every purchase that you make, all of that goes towards information being collected on you. Some people will say, I don't care, but ultimately this gets added to these multitude of databases that they have, and it's not a good thing ultimately. They can control us in this way. That's what the cashless society is truly all about. I want to switch gears a little bit, talk more of the business side, the corporate side. Breaking it down, U.S. banks made $183 billion in interest and fees from credit cards in 2017. The business is booming here, and you can see that over the years since the financial crisis, obviously people have been spending like crazy and this has been a factor that has led to 
such an increase in corporate profits in many different companies. Now there are new companies which have popped up, um, and you you know you see ones that have been around a little while. But certainly something like a PayPal has been used to transact, and we're going away from the more uh, traditional aspect, and, and that's what I'm definitely seeing here. You can see the amount of money that credit cards make on interest is unbelievable. I mean, when you see credit cards charging 18% interest, I think, you know, the average is around 15 to 18. I can't remember the exact number, but somewhere in there, you know people are getting gouged, paying the minimum constantly. Speaking of cash, Apple leaves overseas cash out of its latest quarterly report. I thought that was interesting. A country that said, hey, we're going to bring all this money back. We're going to pay our taxes and so on. But they left their overseas cash out of the report. I really like to see what, first of all, why is this even a possibility? If you did that, you know what would happen to you. But somebody else, you know, if they happen to be a big corporation, they can do whatever they want. They don't have to follow the gap, generally accepted accounting principles, methods of, you know, accounting. So, anyway. Here are the S&P 500 non-financials with high, greater than 5% market cap, trapped in cash overseas. I'm gonna show you some of this. Obviously, the font is very small. I'll just cover a few from this that you'll recognize. Apple, large quantity here. When we look down this list, you will see other familiar names like Microsoft. Keep going down the list, Coca-Cola. Caterpillar, Johnson & Johnson, I mean, huge companies, Pepsi, Intel, and, of course, Alphabet or Google. And so these companies here, if you're interested, you can check the sources for you. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that there are billions and billions and billions of dollars of cash sitting overseas. We we're being told that all of a sudden everything was going to come back in. And this huge storm was going to just flood in. It's not really happening. Overseas cash balances aren't always dropping. Cash held overseas at the end of 2017, and in this case here, for Cisco, it actually increased as of March 31st. So some companies have brought that back and other companies have not. Facebook, they've increased. So just to show you what has happened, this is according to uh, company filings. Bloomberg put together the, the data. Okay, and I'm just going to show you very quickly, go through the next few things here, talking about capital controls. I think capital controls are so important to pay attention to. You can see the restriction of money, and they are able to restrict it so easily when everything is cashless, when you have these credit, debit, and digital transactions. The government is taking measures to control the property market in order to make sure that housing is for living and not for speculation. This is out of China here. The whole article is, you know, I'm not gonna get into it, but essentially capital controls are taking place in China, just as an example. Then we have this article. China is relaxing limits on outbound investments by wealthy individuals and institutions for the first time in two years as the country's stable economy and stronger currency give the ruling Communist Party more confidence that it has capital outflows under control. So we see these type of things coming up and they will always consistently be flip-flopping back and forth. I wanted to check that, you know, this is from April. It's new information, but ultimately what I see here is more restrictions over time. They may 
you know, try to manipulate their currency, and that's why they do these things. But I definitely see more restrictions taking place. Greek exports continue growing despite capital controls and overtaxation. This is obviously uh, coming at a time when the situation in Europe is always getting worse. Since the sovereign debt crisis, nothing has been fixed. Asia flings open doors to foreign cash, but there's a catch. Foreign investors face capital flow and trading restrictions. And so it goes on here. I wanted to show you that this problem exists all over the world. Now, Argentina, I've been covering this topic a lot recently because it is so important. So let me get into this uh, quickly, a couple articles, uh, articles and charts. As the United States raises interest rates, investors are trading emerging market currencies for dollars. This has depressed the value of many currencies, notably the Turkish lira, but the Fed's actions were widely expected and the global impacts have been relatively modest. Argentines, however, are prone to overreact and the alarmist theatrics are a national pastime. Now that's according to The Hill, but they get into some of the details here and they tried to tried to. Argentina's central bank sold $5.3 billion, 10% of its hard currency reserves, but the peso still lost 12% of its value in less than a week. Unbelievable where this has really gone. All right. Four companies held more than $500 billion of total overseas as of the last report. And uh, I don't know what year this chart is from or what time frame, but I think it is uh, relatively up to date. I think it's the end of last year. Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Oracle, all big offenders of that. Retail exodus, Argentines exit fixed income positions, turn to the dollar. You can see what has happened here. And last but not least, Major debt burden. Argentina faces over $111 billion in payments over the next 10 years. The blue area is interest alone. And then the black is the principal. So take a look at how much they owe and see over the next few years how this will all add up. And there's simply no way that they're going to be able to pay this off, especially if their economy is continuing on the same trajectory. There's no way. So I'll end it there. This is basically some information that I really wanted to cover because I know that it is important for many people all around the world. Do not get fixated on what's happening and try to... Figure out ways to do your best for yourself, for your family, and be able to really prevent some of this from happening. If you live in a country that is, let's say, better off than some of the other ones, you shouldn't necessarily be celebrating that today. You should be preparing because it could happen to you at any moment. At any moment. People don't realize it until it's too late. It happens every time all throughout history. So that's my message. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support the channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books at Amazon. There are links in the description of this video. Take care.